Hello, I hope you all are well. Um, in the next few uh, video, I'm going to talk about load and load path. When a structure has been identified, the first thing you do is try to uh, determine the, uh, the load that a structure can support or should support. For example, if you have a tall building, you worry about wind load and how you're going to design your shear wall or cross frames. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start talk about load and load types. Load types. Load types can be divided into a vertical load and horizontal load, or gravity load or lateral load. Now, in a gravity load, it can include dead load, life load, rain load, and uh, snow load. And life load can include also roof life load and uh, floor life load. The uh, lateral load it includes uh, wind load, and uh, earthquake load and other load uh, such as uh, earth pressure, water pressure, blast, and impact load. When you look at the beam, the load, loads on beam is given either in pound per foot or kips per foot, or we can say basically it's uh, uh, given in an uh, uh, SI system will be newton uh, uh, per meter or kilonewton uh, per meter. And loads on the floor or a roof is given in pound per square foot or kips per square foot or an NSI unit will be newton per meter square or kilonewton per meter square. And loads on column is given in pound or kips or an SI unit will say newton or kilonewton. Again, before we go ahead and calculate, learn how to calculate these load, one thing you got to know ahead of a time is the turbatory area. What is turbatory area? It's basically, uh, it's where each load on a structure is supported entirely by the nearest uh, structural member. Uh, take a look at this example here. We have this uh, bridge, and this is a cross section of bridge, and has a one, two, three, four, five girder, and girder number two from the uh, uh, my left. And you can see that the turbatory width is halfway between this girder and a girder next to it to the right, and a girder next to it to the left. And that distance will be, in this case, will be three and a half feet. So your turbatory width is about seven feet. And let's do a couple of examples to kind of clarify this a little bit more. Um, we have this uh, building, seven-story building. And if we look at the floor plan of the building, and this is the floor plan of the building, and at the base size of the base are 25 by 25. And you can see the beam and column layout uh, in this uh, floor plan. Now let's take a portion of this floor plan and kind of uh, blow it up a little bit to make it easier. And uh, we see right here, we got these four different shaded area. Let's calculate the uh, turbatory area for them. And let's start out with the, um, uh, the uh, column on the uh, uh, left corner, uh, A1, column A1. So the turbatory area for the column of A1 is going to be halfway, the distance between halfway that column and the next column. And you, because of the column is on a corner, there's nothing on top or to the left of it. So therefore, the turbatory area is available it's, uh, to, uh, to the right and to the uh, uh, south of it. And that's why it's going to be halfway between this column and the next column. And the area is going to come out to become basically 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Moving on over to find out the turbatory area for beam BC1. But that's the edge beam. There's nothing on outside of it. Therefore, the only area in front of it that is going to carry the load is between that beam and the next beam over, which is a beam BC2. And the, the, the difference between them is halfway between and about uh, 4.15. Keep going and look at the center column. The turbatory area for this center column is, and look at the center column, and you just measure halfway between this column and the other column all around them. And you end up with this square here. And therefore, your turbatory area, basically self-explanatory right here, is 25 feet by 25 feet. And finally, we can see the, uh, uh, the center beam uh, uh, CD6, and the turbatory area is going to be halfway between that beam and the two beam outside of it, just like the bridge girder. 
and that's going to come out to uh, 25 by 8.33 and that's your turbotry area so this were basically how how easy it is when we get to a life load we talk about influence area and we will use these in our calculation and when we do a dead load our next video when we're going to come out we're going to talk about how we're going to calculate dead load and we're going to use a turbotry area to calculate this thank you be well